person research, which is uh, one of my research topics. So I thought I'll hear what you say. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously we have a lot of folks from the Mitri and that's not really a surprise because Mitri has been one of the most successful entities, I would say, who's been really going after some of this rail research. And we've been working with Colin for more than a, probably close to 10 years on trying to get this collaboration going and getting Mitri work on rail topics. And now they are doing that. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I have a fairly brief presentation that kind of introduces the, what the broad agency announcement is, how it functions, and, uh, and, and some guidelines for those who are interested in looking into it. This probably won't take more than 10 to 15 minutes, and you can certainly ask questions all the, at, at any point when, when you need to. And after that, we have a few people here. Uh, we have uh, uh, Yusef, and I think uh, Beth Weynard is coming here too, who have actually got some BAA funding, and obviously Mitri guys have been really involved. So it's going to be more of an open discussion, and we can stay as long as, as there's questions remaining. So, But let's go. Well, I guess we should have introduced... Pam too. Well, we have we do have a Pam Anna, and I'll do the introduction. Who's the coordinator for the Michigan Tech Transportation Institute? If you do decide go after BAA and FRA asks you to write a full proposal, you'll be get you will get to know Pam very, very well because she's going to help you to do it exactly the right way that we get actually the funding. So there we go. So broad agency announcement. Um, there is actually a few different ones. This is the so-called general BAA, which is open to anyone. So any industry company, anybody from academia, pretty much anybody can propose a topic to FRA under this program. There are a couple of other pre BAAs by FRA. One is called BAA IRS, Intelligent Railway Systems, and one is called BAA Universities, which obviously means that only universities can su submit proposals to that one. IRS tends to look into more technology solutions, but the one that they have opened right now is the BAA general that is open for everybody. You never know when one of the other ones comes out. I mean, they're not very good at telling us it's going to come next month or next week. This BAA, we were told, was going to come in October, and it suddenly popped out now. So they're not very good in timing. The one thing, key thing about all the FRA work is that it solicits a variety of applied technology research projects that will support their strategic objectives. And you'll see a little bit more about what that means, but the applied research is definitely a core thing on anything that FRA does. There are four main categories, track rolling stock and equipment, train control and human factors. And these are really structured under, these are the four divisions they have under their research and development uh, office, office of research and development. Now, if you look at the PAA, you'll see there's actually a fifth category, which is systems topics, I think. It was uh, uh, under heading. We'll look at that in a moment. So that's kind of something that you know, I think they, they kind of collaborate across the offices more on those topics. And there's the link on the bottom of the slide. We'll post these slides on the MIDI, MIDI website. And I will actually, we'll send them also to everybody who, who, who joined today. So you can go and look at the, um, the FRA PAA from the sam.gov website, or you can go and search for it and you'll find it from there. So this talks a little bit more about where your project should be if you want to propose it under this program. Levels one through seven, these is so-called technology readiness levels, one through seven is eligible. However, the first two levels are really, especially the first one is more basic research, stuff that NSF funds. FRA rarely funds projects like that, especially under this program. They may consider it under some other programs, but not under this one. For this program, you typically have to be somewhere between three and seven, where you have at least concept formulated, but normally something even a little bit more than that. Some of your methodologies or, or technologies are already being used somewhere else, and you're just adapting them or you're expanding them or something like that. It's a vague line. So don't get, you know, if you kind of like, well, mine really applies more for the technology concept level, well, you should submit it. All if they can say is no, if they don't like it, or if they say that it's too early, they may say, no, this is a little bit too early. Keep working on it. It's interesting, but we need to see something more before we want to find it. 
But 327 is really uh, the core areas. I mean, they like to get some kind of product typically beyond just the report from these projects. The broad program funding for individual projects, I don't know, typically they've outlined in the RFP, what is their total budget? It's been normally like two and a half to 3 million maybe, but they didn't outline it this time. And I know FRA has been getting more funding. They've been getting kind of plus ups. So they may have a bigger budget overall this year. I don't know. But they do say that typically individual projects are between $50,000 and $500,000 per project. Now, there's a bit of a caveat. If you have a multi-year project, say three years, then they normally ask you to break it down to phases, often on annual basis. The phase. It, just made, it makes administration way easier if it's on annual basis. So in those cases, you could say that, well, you shouldn't have more than 500,000 per phase. But I would say in general terms, at least based on our experience, if you really wanna get the project funded, if your annual fee or the per phase price is around 150 to 200 plus thousand, those seem to be the ones that they are very willing to fund. I don't know how much, it may be tougher if you start getting to really higher numbers, like three, four $400,000 per year. Cost sharing is not required, but if you read the RFP, they have this whole long conversation about how they try to get other resources devoted into some of these projects. So they definitely, they literally say it is FRA policy to obtain cost share participation whenever possible, but they define what cost share means. It doesn't always mean just I'm gonna keep $20,000 of my own money. There's multiple ways how they look at the cost share, in kind, all kinds of things. So if we can find an industry partner and they provide some data, that is definitely considered a cost share in the eyes of FRA. We have been able to recently request GACs for this, even though it is not required to cost share, but we have some projects that we got some GACs. So that's definitely one option to bring a little bit of your own money into it. We have collaborated with private industry. We've got sometimes actual dollars from them, but more often we've got some data or something that we can then turn. And even if you can't quantify the cost share, I mean, if you have a real company working with you, I guarantee it automatically lifts you to a different level because that shows that industry is committed into what you're doing or interested in what you're doing. And then we've done in the past when we couldn't use a cost share because of the university rules that it's not required, you can't offer it. We were able to do this so-called, we said, well, we're gonna use this from this project. We're gonna do this one task from other pool of funds that we have available. And it's honestly, it's kind of like a based on mutual understanding because there's no, no like a dollar amount or there's no dollar tracking to the FRA contract from it. But we said that we are gonna work under, I had some other, federal funding. So I said, that, well, we're going to put $50,000 out of this new rail center to work on this and this aspect that is directly related to this project. So you can try to be innovative with creating some of these additional funding levels. This is the program topics. Your, If you do want to propose on this, it has to address one of these topics that are listed. I smartly printed it out the so-called Appendix C that I think we send out as well. It has these topics, but it has a description on each topic, one or two paragraphs of what they are interested in. And then I left them to the printer. I printed 10 copies of them. I was gonna bring everybody a hard copy, but I left them to a printer. So, uh, but you have to address one of these. Most of the topics are very specific. But if you look at, there's also some like for the track research, it says research in response to track division strategic priorities. And if you go to BAA, you can read all the strategic priorities they have. And it's honestly almost anything under the sky. So while it looks like it's very narrow, some of the divisions allow you to kind of propose almost anything that fits under their portfolio. Now, what's interesting is that 
the other divisions did not put that. In the past, most divisions have said that you can propose something that addresses their strategic areas. But this time, it was only the track research that put that general statement there. So it looks like most of the divisions are really trying to narrow it down to these specific topics. Few of these are actually university only. I think there was one, there was one in the track division, and then many of these railroad system issues were for universities only. All the other ones, anybody can be submitting. And universities can certainly have people in their teams, but they have to be leading. So if you didn't, if you see a title that you think, oh, well, this might fit for me. Well, then look at the more detailed description and see if there's something that you could uh, maybe propose under that. So if you do find a topic and you actually want to like, okay, I want to try this out. I'm going to, I want to submit something. How does this work? Officially, you could just write a six page white paper. This kind of a, uh, 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 I think I have it on the next slide. It's a, it, well, I'll, I'll talk about what the white paper, that's kind of the official submittal. You could just write it and submit it. That's okay. However, it saves the time by FRA and by you and us if we do this earlier cycle. We call it the idea cycle. This is nothing official, but we've created this cycle with FRA. They have a new person running the program, but I talked to him last night and I said that, hey, are you still open for this, that we submit some ideas to you, you give us some feedback, and then we go based on that. He said, absolutely. That's how we like to do it. So if you find a topic, we recommend you write a one-page idea, and we can send you some examples of those, some successful ones. And uh, you end up sending that to me or to Pam, actually to Pam. No, I'm, I'm going to be in Oh, actually, yeah. I'm You're going to have to send it to me. Let me, I, we gotta fix that. So everybody who's watching this recording, you have to send to Posse and I'll, I'll give the email address later here. So send one page project idea to me, Posse, by 8 a.m. on February 20th. I'll put them together to one single document and I'll send them to FRA. Their program manager divides them to different P project managers who, whose area it addresses. And hopefully by February 27th, we hear back something. Sometimes it's like, yeah, this doesn't really fit. We're not really interested. Okay, not too bad, but at least you didn't waste time to write a six page uh, document. Or they may say that, well, we are kind of interested. We'd like to talk with you. We've actually had some phone calls with them where they talk about, they ask them, what do you mean by this? Or how about doing this? So they kind of help you out. Or they may say that, yeah, this is really good. Write the white paper. So if you do get, write the white paper, then the next step is to write the full concept paper. I'll talk some more in detail. Those have to be submitted by March 15th. You're gonna be back, yes. Well, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> now, if you wanna get some feedback on your concept paper, then we would need it a little bit in advance. I'll dedicate some of my time to read them through and provide some feedback on those. And if you don't care for feedback, then it, as long as you submit like a day before we have to submit them to FRA, we'll put them again to a nice package and then we submit them all at the same time to the FRA. I see, how long are the concept papers? I'll show you on the next slide. Once they get submitted, we are supposed to hear back within 60 days if they like the project and if they want us to write, write a full proposal for it. Now, if, we, if, if you're asked to write a full proposal, so far, I would say 80 to 85% of those proposals have been funded. So if you do get asked to write a full proposal, it's a very good chance you get funded. There's been now few on the latest iteration that didn't get funded. There's some that are still kind of sitting there. It may take a long time. So the concept paper. A um, couple of things to, well, both for the idea and concept paper, a couple of things to think about. When you look at the project idea, look at what is FRA funding already. There's a link in this presentation to all their research pr projects they are funding. It's uh, 157 slides. There's one slide or so-called quad chart I'll show you of each project they are already funding. 
definitely go through that stack and look at is there anything already funded that I'm proposed to do? Because if they're already funding, it's unlikely they're going to fund it to you. Although sometimes they've funded two different projects that are doing kind of the same thing. Um, as if you have something that has been tested or implemented somewhere else, other industry, other fields, something, definitely. If you can adapt some kind of existing technology to Rails, I think you have a really good chance. Because if you can make that case, then they feel that it's been proven. It's just a matter of bringing that knowledge to the rail industry's use. Third thing, is it reasonable for budget frames? Keep that in mind. This is not $2 million for five years. So if it's too big, then you got to either narrow it down or consider a different program. Now to the concept papers. There are five pages in length, excluding cover page and the so-called quad chart, but pretty much five pages, that's it. We'll send you some examples, anybody who's interested. Oh, they kind of follow the same, fairly similar flow and concept, what the sections are that you have to address in the concept paper. Um, right, encouraged to discuss project prior to writing concept paper. We already talked about that. It does require a bold project, but, budget, but you don't have to go through the SPO and work out the detailed budget. I still recommend you do that. So I always work the internal budget worksheet. I don't submit it to SPO and ask them to review it or something, but I work it through so I understand that the numbers I'm putting out to the FRA are somehow re realistic. However, when you write the full proposal, you have a chance to adjust your budgets. But you know, if you told them that this is gonna cost about 350,000, they said, that, yeah, that sounds like a good deal. And then your full proposal is suddenly 700,000. They're gonna be like, what the, what? That's not what you told us in the concept paper. So be, try to be realistic. And again, if you have multiple years, consider breaking it down to phases because when FRA funds a project, if they fund phase one out of three year project that costs 200,000, they only take a hit of that year's budget for the 200,000. If it was a whole project in one single phase, then it would eat up. 600,000 of their one year project or budget, making it difficult for them to fund a lot of projects. Again, we have some examples available. The quad chart that I mentioned, so this is required. It's a one slide that presents what your project's about. The description, what the impact is to the railroads, who are the partners and what is the cost and schedule in one slide. They have pretty strict guidelines for it. And then one corner is for different photos or something graphical about your project. When you do this, follow the instructions of the FRA. They give fund instructions. They give all kinds of instructions. How many bullet points to have on each quarter? What is the size of your fund? What to put into each quarter? Follow those instructions. It frustrates them and us when people just submit some crap and don't pay attention to what they were asked to submit. So this is one example of our LCA project that we are working on right now of the quad chart. Yeah, here's just the kind of the basic look of the quad chart. I can't remember, they, they've kind of shift, mm -hmm. shifted it around. So this may be an old version, but they give a template for it. So, that's kind of in a nutshell how the process goes. So like I said, I mean, we started submitting like 2008 or nine first time. So 10 plus years, you got a few projects here and there in the beginning. And then last year, it was like an explosion. We submitted, I think 12 white papers. We got asked to write 10 or 11 proposals. There was actually, there's two programs, BA and BA universities, but still we got asked to submit insane amount of projects. And most of them got funded. So currently, these are all the projects that are funded on the rail research. The ones in bold are funded under the BAA program. So we just finished one on uh, some of the driver behavior. We have quite a few related to grade crossings. Quillin just finished another one. Uh, we are working on another one that is going to finish in the fall. Then we have a couple of the Mitri projects that. Uh, we're actually under SBIR program through FRA, and the next one is now under from state of, or from the Amtrak funds. And then we have one that Beth just started with Phil Argion, who's now at Virginia Tech, 
also on the grade crossing topics. And then here's the whole list. These are all BAA projects. Tom Holman is leading one. Jeremy Warm is leading one. I'm leading the LCA one that uh, Anas is working. I showed the quad chart. And Yusef is running his, uh, his coastal railroad system. And then we have one more workforce development one. And finally, Paul Sanders has uh, one related to wire um, WAN process. Pazi, that's more than I had even realized that had been funded under the BAA. That's great. Yeah. And, and in addition to that, we still have three more that we have from last year that we are waiting to hear if they are going to fund them or not. And I just heard that somebody else on another university just got one of theirs. Finally, the money came through. So we kind of never know when they suddenly pop up and come through. So we may have three more. These are actually from the BAA University program last year, these three projects. And then we also have other, that's actually wrong. We also have so-called CRISI proposals. We have three proposals on the CRISI program which is a different FRA program, typically much bigger projects, longer projects, programmatic projects. But we have three proposals waiting for if those get funded. So there's a lot going on. I think right now, if you look at number-wise, the number of projects funded by FRA in a single university, my guess is that we have more than any other university in the US, even though there's much bigger really universities. But the reason why we have so many is because we've got different types of faculty, seven different PIs from five different departments. I don't think you don't normally, most universities, they have two or three faculty who really hit this hard and do good work, but they don't spread it out like we've been able to do. So it's been successful. There's no reason why it couldn't keep expanding. I think we have a very good reputation with FRA right now. It is also gonna be, important that you know if we get more projects that every single project delivers like we say one bad apple can really kill a lot of the rest of the reputation so that's it um that's all i had kind of in the introduction we can turn into discussion but before we turn we are gonna also have another meeting info session next week we just decided that today and that's going to be on the sbir programs the small business innovation research programs uh, that Colin, Colin is going to be leading that same webinar and uh, yep. to talk about those who may be interested more on the commercialization and so on. Yeah, those those topics just got released yesterday. So um, I'm reviewing reviewing them. And um, as, we, as I'll talk about next week, uh, our small business startup, Mitri Inc., uh, we created here with help of Jim Baker is a Central partner for um, for being the small business uh, part of the project, right? So with that, I'll open this up for any open discussion from folks online or or folks in the room. Any questions, thoughts, comments? Has anybody looked at the list of topics yet, or seen anything yeah, that so might be this time? There are not much many topics, especially the one that I submitted to. So I ask you already, do you expect like they release another one in summer that has more topics? You know, I really don't know. I haven't heard anything officially that are they going to have another round of BAA University or BAA IRS. Uh, so I don't know about that. I do know this. So one additional thing that is coming out of the FRA is supposed to come out very soon. Many of you probably know the University Transportation Center program, UTC program, that different universities can submit, well, Leo let one proposal. Well, FRA have funds in this latest in transportation bill to establish its own center of rail excellence. And we've been waiting for that request for proposals to come out is that the one that you sent an email with that uh, one slide that they are going to fund this year? Might be. Okay. Might be. I, I can't remember. You uh, you sent uh, like one slide to the to us. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So they are and they budgeted it. It looks like two point five million for three years. It's going to be a consortium. We have some interest from different directions to be in a consortium. 
I wouldn't rule out the possibility of us leading one. Um, but it's supposed to be coming out anytime. So that's going to be an additional thing to, you know, that we, we are going to be looking to hopefully get as many faculty who might be interested. And the more we can get into these programs, the more projects we already have, the more credibility we have for trying to lead a center for rail excellence. But the BAA, IRS or BAA university programs, I just, I don't know. And why the topics are as they are, I don't know. They create them internally. I will say this, there was a major shift in the biggest rail research facility in the US, which is in Pueblo, Colorado, called Transportation Technology Center. It was operated, it's a federally owned center, but it was operated by something called TTCI for the last 30 plus years, which was really owned by all the big railroads. Well, last year, there was a competition and they, the incumbent lost it to ENSCO. ENSCO won the operations of that center for the next five to 20 years. So it's completely changing who's operating it. The incumbent ended up generating somewhat a competing research center next to it. So now we have two rail research centers. But my point is that FRA is gonna have a lot of motivation to try to put as much research that gets done at the TTC in Pueblo. Now we happen to be one of the eight universities in the academic consortium that works with ENSCO and that center. So that's something that I think under these projects and under any FRA projects, the more we can incorporate maybe work and testing work, field work at the Pueblo site, the better chances there's gonna be. Any other questions, comments? Uh, Ozzy, this is Bill Buller. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was looking at, you know, in particular, kind of checking out some of the university only topics. Mm -hmm. And one of them that caught my eye is a bit outside my wheelhouse. It's uh, the evaluation for potential risk for track caused derailments. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, down here at Mitri uh, definitely have some some interesting expertise in uh, um, you know some of the probability theory aspects of this problem. We don't have much in the way of uh, I, I mean I don't think any of us can say much about like derailment and uh, uh, rail construction. Uh, beyond if a train derails its probability was one um but uh and i'm kind of curious yeah if if there's someone in the room on this call that would be interested in uh exploring that topic further like i say i feel like our expertise in like measurement and also the 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 whole like um decision uh support type for probabilistic problems is maybe interesting, but but we definitely don't have all of the expertise that would be needed here. It's an interesting topic. It's a, I don't wanna say, well, it's a loaded topic. It's one of the most important aspects for the industry and tough not to crack. It's also extremely data intensive topic. And often the challenge has been, how do you get to the data? so that you can really work with it. That's where ENSCO may help. Uh, I actually just sent around today, trying to remember if I sent it to Colin, because ENSCO is the main contractor going through and collecting track geometry data for the FRA on 24 seven basis. And it sounds like through our consortium partnership with them, we actually would have uh, access to all that data. And to me, that might actually open our possibilities for doing something like you just mentioned on these on these probabilities and risks and all those aspects. Until now, I always felt that you first gotta be able to get into the industry and get access to their data, but now we might not need to do that. Okay. I'm certainly open for, I'd, I'd be happy to try to help with uh, doing some brainstorming on that topic. 
Yeah, well, I think if, if you could uh, keep us in the loop as far as working with ENSCO, what, what sorts of data what, might we have access to help uh, kind of mining the um, information to, to, to start doing some analysis on that problem? Yeah. Colin, did I send you that? I thought I sent you the slides from ENSCO today, didn't I? Uh, if so, I haven't caught up with that yet. Let me just check. I can definitely send those out. And then, you know, the uh, the topics at the end, which is kind of uh, definitely university aimed, uh, encouraging early interest in railroad careers, as well as, you know, making the workforce recruitment for railways more inclusive. Um, those topics, uh, you know, I'm not clear whether that really goes towards uh, us as, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not clear what they want. And so there's, part of me is uh, interested in um, if someone knows who you reach out to at uh, FRA to, dis you know, to, to get a better understanding of what they're really looking for there. We have some avenues for that. And we've obviously done quite a bit of those types of projects for FRA. So, uh... Okay. I haven't really honestly looked at them in much of a detail yet, but there may be opportunities and that's the ESCO consortium is also looking at potential partnering in the projects, but that also always gets dicey because now you're going to have multiple universities to agree what they do and time is limited and budget is limited. So I don't. Yeah. Okay. No, that sounds, much, yeah. yeah. I don't hold too much hope for that. But there might be something because they they have also some universities who can who have some real credentials on these areas. Yeah. Okay. Now that's good. Thank you. Any other questions? So my understanding, there are three types of from uh, DAA. So I I remember when we submitted our proposal that had an IRS under it. So this one is not the IRS. Correct? Oh, did yours have an IRS? I think so. I, I'm not 100% sure. Well, we have to get to my. Okay, it, it might be. Yeah. Yeah, this is not. This is okay. the so called general That's one. Why it doesn't have those topics yeah. at all. Like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, that's not completely correct. I mean, there's often much overlap between IRS and general topics, but IRS normally concentrated on something that was related to building intelligence, building this. It was probably a little bit more researchy topics than these ones are much more kind of well, application oriented intelligence railway systems oh, and those were also the the other difference was that irs was limited just for university teams but we have we've got several projects under this one as well i need to go on i get confused at times and yeah, I didn't know. Last that. year, the, it was like we got the BAA, then very soon after we got the BAA University. So it was like a nonstop for freaking four months of writing white papers and proposals. And I don't write them, but I, I'm involved in every single one of them. And it was insane. It's crazy. Every two weeks was a new proposal. Anything else? Um, so for the three steps in uh, the proposal submission, mm -hmm. do you have any data for, for example, how many submissions they would get for each step, abstract, concept, proposal, and final proposal? proposal? So this whole submitting ideas and getting back, I don't know how many other entities do it or how many do it like we do, like we literally build a package and then send it to them. I think a lot of people just write a concept paper. Now, there's some also who may talk on the phone because they know somebody at FRA and they kind of pitch their idea in verbally first and then they write their concept paper. So it's not an official step. We kind of created this protocol with FRA for us, the first step. On concept paper level, I know that that has really escalated. They used to get maybe 70, 80 concept papers. I think last year they got like 170, 80. So, and that's part of the reason why you don't always hear back in 60 days because they just, 
and I'm dating. How many, how many were found in the previous cycle? I don't, you see the tricky part comes because when you look at, so they have a $3 million budget, for example. So typically some of that budget goes to the continuing projects from the previous year and somewhere it goes to starting brand new ones. Um, I don't, I don't know. I would say that maybe 10 to dozen, but you gotta remember that they typically pick the projects they wanna fund before they ask you to write the full proposal. So once you write the full proposal, then there's a pretty good chance that it gets funded. It used to be literally, at least for us, it used to be 100% until the last couple of years. And I know that last year, the previous program manager at FRA was a little bit frustrated because he felt that too many of their divisions was asking too many full proposals because he said that there's no way they can fund them. We don't have the funding for it. So, and he wasn't sure why was it because they didn't quite know which one of the projects they wanted to fund. So they wanted to get both proposals and then pick and choose instead of, you know, pick it based on the concept paper and say that we just want this one. Or, you know, was there some other reason why they were asking to write so many proposals? But again, in our case, I mean, we've only had two or three proposals over these 10 plus years that haven't got funded, plus these three that are still waiting. So we've had, it, it used to be 100%, now it's probably like 85%. Out of the concept papers that you submit, normally, you know, we used to submit maybe four to six concept papers on annual basis, and we would normally get asked to write a one to two full proposals until again, a couple of years ago when we submitted maybe 13 concept papers and we got asked to write 11 full proposals. So. Never know. Anything else? Any other comments from you, Colin or Yusuf, who've been somewhat involved in this? Oh, I, I I like the the extra process that you've been able to work out with the one page idea. I remember doing that before, and that was nice to get encouraged to go even beyond that. Yeah, and they, it they reduces the burden. You're not wasting a whole lot of your time if you do a one pager, and you're not wasting tons of your time in even if you write a concept paper. Although it certainly takes some time, you know, you can't write that in an hour or two. And they've certainly been friendly towards some of our drone-based sensing and decision support system development ideas. Um, the one we're doing with Thomas on the um, Ground hazard mitigation is probably a, a good example of that. Right. But I I haven't I haven't read through them yet. I've only looked at the titles and, and I don't see uh an immediate fit without reading the details, but certainly the ones I put at least a go read it ones by were uh the one that Bill talked about, evaluation of potential risk for track cause derailments. Um Instrumented broken spike detection looked interesting. Um, broken rail detection to support communications based operation research and uh, social and community factors contributing to pedestrian trespass behaviors and motorist incursions on railroad systems. Because um, they talked a lot about that at the uh, grade crossing and trespassing workshop that I went to down in uh, North Carolina late last year. I think that, that is one that we should really look at serious. So. It's, it's certainly a big problem. Anything else? Uh, for yep. for those coming from uh, like universities, does the FRA have any expectation for the involvement of industry? Something that you desire or absolutely like huge, huge. Yeah. I mean, they you know, I think they even say it literally at the FRP that you know, industry involvement is very encouraged. So, I don't remember how they say it, but again, FRA tries to build solutions for the industry. <clears throat> so, to them, if you have a company involved, uh, it means that there's some buying from the industry side. So, if I go back to our 
list of uh, projects here, if I can. Oops. So if we start taking a look at this list, uh, I guess on these ones, we don't have as many. We have a Patel is involved in that one. We had a Volpe translation center involved on one. Um, we have a couple of uh, local agencies in the in the M track one, but this next page. So in Tom's project, we have BNSF Railway, we have Loran Maintenance Away, MDOT, and Wisconsin Southern or Watco as partners in the project. This is actually we are subcontractors for American Shortline Railroad Association, and they have two of their companies are involved, and we're going to be also working with Escanapole Superior Railroad on that. On the LCA, uh, it's us and University of Texas Austin, but we also have Wandel Consultants who are working with us and three industry committees from uh, three industry organizations kind of on a volunteer basis. USEF, we have CN and CSX, two of the major class one railroads who are working with us. Some of you for the laptop universities and then Paul Sanders, he's working with Amstead Rail on that one. So almost every single one has a very strong industry component, but that's where we can help you. If you have an idea, we know if you say that, well, can we find this or this and all this, I would need something like this from the industry. That's where we can help. We have almost 20 people in our rail advisory board who have hundreds of connections in the industry. We have a lot of companies who like to work with us. As Paul said, so we had just CSX, then there was this rail transportation day we had, and Adam from CN was on that, and I explained my project, he said, why don't you uh, work on our railway too? Yeah. So he, he got involved through that events that we had. The Adam is our yeah. alum, Josh Marski, who yeah. is uh, R&D, well, the track standards director for CSX is one of our alum. So a lot of these people who are involved in them are my old students. And we need to figure out the details about the, the industry sponsors at the stage of preparing the uh, one page abstract or is that um, No, no, definitely not the details. And But you know, we can already, when, once we see what your one page is, we may be able to make a call and, I can call the chat and say, hey, do you think you guys might be interested in this and this kind of topic? And they can probably say, yeah, probably. Then we can say that we are planning to work with the BNSF or we're going to be looking. At that point, you can say that who we might be looking to work with in the industry. Once you get to the concept paper, you don't need any formal commitment even for concept paper. But you definitely want to, I don't, I don't like, I personally don't like putting anybody's name there unless I've got some kind of verbal agreement from them that they will do work. To me, it's not really ethical to put somebody if it's just like, well, I think I'm going to work with them. There should be some communication. But it's not really, even if the concept paper is not required, but again, if you have those outlined there and the stronger they are, the better chance there is that FRS says that, yeah, let's move on, get a full proposal. Any other All right, well, we are almost at three o'clock, so I think we're gonna start closing this up unless we have any further questions from the online folks. Um, but yeah, uh, if you have any questions, we'll post the recording, we'll post the slides. If somebody else you think might be interested, feel free to share it. If you wanna work with some other universities, you can do that. I mean, Yusef has somebody from Argon involved and you can certainly do that. Now, I wouldn't start shipping these presentations to other universities. We don't necessarily need any more competition, but we are certainly partnerships are all good. Yeah, so for my case, I reached out to Pink Bay. He does like a stone model. Right. And uh, the, the location that we were looking, Pink Bay said that he has a model like the Gulf of Mexico. So he suggested that we reach out to his uh, because he has a joint appointment in Oregon to work with William, so he introduced us yeah. uh, to William. If there was someone at the university that we could directly work with, I wouldn't have reached out. Yeah, yeah. but we had to have someone from outside. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat>
Well, thanks for coming. Get some more coffee and cookies. We kind of knew that we get to eat a bunch of them. Sorry, Mitri, guys, we can't really ship them down there because it's uh, we'll work out the time they get there. We'll work on that for a future proposal. I, I always accept all cookies whenever I'm on <laughs> virtual. <laughs> thanks, hey, Pazzi, thank you, Pazzi, very much. Sounds good.